This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. They're almost everywhere on the planet, unchanged over time, varied beyond belief. No, not these tourists on a cruise in the Galapagos Islands, but rather a very popular symbol, known and loved worldwide. Yes, it's Kermit, folks, star of the multi-million dollar Muppets business. But many of his real-life relatives are hardly known at all. In fact, some rather special ones are still being discovered, as we'll see later. With hopefully no frog's legs on the menu, the list of amphibians, that's frogs, toads, newts, salamanders, and the mysterious Sicilians, adding up to an amazing 7,000 species. And they just happen to be coming some of the most important creatures on Earth, even as far as human survival is concerned. Around half of those 7,000 species are threatened with extinction and over 250 species have not been seen since the turn of this century. But a few have appeared against the odds, and they provide a glimmer of hope and could hold vital clues as to how we stem the largest loss in biodiversity since humans appeared on the Earth. Now we can help. A classic case of winners and losers, and maybe winners again, if we heed their warnings from the wild. Some can even fly, or at least glide. Amphibians and their great variety led to the reptiles, not so tied to water, and descended in the story of life on Earth from animals with no backbones like insects and other invertebrates. And another flying frog with the right feed for gliding and hanging on in the jungle. agile both on land or in water, these amphibians. Even in the past, useful too, if you thought you were pregnant. An injection of urine into the female clawed toad would produce eggs within a short time. These toads are entirely aquatic and a reminder of how important water is to this remarkable group of animals. As the climate changes around the world, these often inconspicuous little creatures may have a message for us. Not like a visitor trying to keep the rain out in a Costa Rican rainforest. Perfect place for frogs and toads, or at least you might think so. And it's a protected place too. The Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, with one particular species in mind. It's not a hummingbird. No, they're doing fine. These are not. They're in fact extinct. And this is the only place on Earth where they were, lots of them, when they gathered to breed. 1,500 in five pools in 1987, 48,000 eggs laid. Well, what could possibly go wrong? And is there anything we can do? On the face of it, these animals seem very vulnerable, but they can live almost anywhere, like here in the dry grasslands of Kenya whereas the warning color of the golden toad may deter a predator. The color of these toads is the opposite, camouflage. Though it doesn't work too well and they have to come to water to breed. The hammer cop, an odd kind of stork, knows this, but although these toads don't warn of their toxicity by color, it seems to work. Dragonflies, possibly food for the toads if they're not too busy, come here to breed too. Only possible, as with the toads, if the rains have come. And that, these days, varies a lot. But they can survive a drought by burrowing until next time. This one's got a pointed nose for the job, and his back legs provide the push. Also good for swimming.
and then he's gone. Camouflage is a wonderful thing, but it works best when you don't move and if you choose the right place to blend in. Like in this thorn bush, possibly uncomfortable with all those thorns around. Below is the foam nest from which tadpoles will drop. And that's hardly hidden. So adaptable, so successful, so far. Even here in the barren open fields of Mallorca in Spain, where windmills pump up water, a frog has found a home in this mini marsh. And down under there, spring is advancing. The water plants are greening up. And sticklebacks start to build their nests. Snails graze and our frog washes the shrimps. And a crayfish, a little freshwater lobster. But something is watching him below a dagger of a beak. Coloured like the reeds that have not yet grown green, the bitten is a hidden thread that only sometimes breaks cover in this brown wilderness, home to many thousands of frogs. But this rich mixture of wildlife, be it frogs, bitterns or egrets, was once threatened after the new Mallorca Land Company, based in London, went bankrupt. But a much bigger threat arrived and it reduced the northern part of the Albufera Marsh in Spain, in Mallorca, to a few stagnant pools. Modern tourist development, originally named grandly the City of the Lakes, put everything a tourist could wish for. Some frogs learn to live with golf and in water supplied by a tap, and much of the area is now a successful nature reserve. So what else are amphibians up against now? Can these ancient survivors still cope in our fast changing world? Could Mallorca's mountains still hide rare toads with strange breeding behavior? Even stranger perhaps than that of humans in the concrete cliffs below. In what seems worlds away lives a male toad whose family life is definitely different. He's carrying the eggs she laid and he will take them to the essential water when they hatch. But there's an unseen threat, now worldwide, that requires a solution, and fast. Some midwife toads have been taken to a breeding centre at Mallorca's Dolphin Aquarium. Of course, that's what the public come for, performing, apparently smiling clowns. And how misleading can you be? But in a way, El Ferreret is more exciting in what it can do and has done for millions of years. But all that is now at risk. However, there is a breeding plan and some people care. But is it too late? A lot hinges on education, research and public effort. This toad crossing sign swings into action in England in early spring when toads head for their traditional ponds to breed. They've used their own routes for ages, but now our routes, our roads, are a major hazard. Toad patrols can help, but a much less visible and even more fatal threat is appearing, not just in England, Europe, but across the planet.
Then comes the spawn. Activity continues night and day. But surely with all that mass production, frogs should be winners, not losers. Tadpoles, by the ton, to come? Frogs and toads have evolved some brilliant ways of reproducing, starting with sounds that surprise, and even when they can't be heard, they found a way around that. Who could resist that sound? that one. Well this one can. These two have given up on diplomatic chit-chat and gone for a bit of aggro. Two wrestlers, each one the size of a human fingernail. And you win some and you lose some. But what happens if your voice can't be heard because of the sound of the water that you need so much to survive? Hidden here is a frog rendered inaudible but passionately visible. Not the best foot forward but the best leg sideways. and with a quick press up, it's all sorted. But if you live in waterfalls, what do you do about breeding? Surely any weak tadpoles would get washed away. But not so. See it moving up there. And look at that one on the right now, it's going right over the top towards the, the stream of water. <laughs> How do they do it? Look at that, it slipped, it slipped into the pool. They're feeding, moving, but still hanging on. You know, you have about 45 different stages in the development of the tadpole. That's around about 42, I think, when the... Um, when the front legs start coming Aye. out. And at this stage now the mouth will start um, disappearing, the tadpole mouth. See how it sucks onto your hand? Yes. They've if you thumb down a bit, that's, a, that's good. I can't quite that, see. Almost a golden colour, isn't it? Yes. See all the veins in the tail? Yes. Well. It's got that amazing, yeah. Oh. It's excellent. Uh, Tremendous. Huh. The whole body shows signs of change. The tadpole's mouth will become a frog's mouth. The back legs will walk, hop and swim. And with the front pair, an adult natal ghost frog is complete, ready to cope with a world that is changing too. And But can it and will it? And those questions apply to possibly every single individual of the 7,000 species of frogs, toads, newts, salamanders and Sicilians on the planet. Actually they're more like canaries in a coal mine, but who's going to save the canary? These singers are counted by their calls and this research back in 2009 is crucial evidence in a case of possible mass destruction.
by something you cannot see and or something us humans are up to. So around the world dedicated people are trying to work out what's going on in the very many places these often elusive creatures survive or not. There's the shovel-footed squeaker, the snoring puddle frog, the knocking sand frog. They come in all shapes and sizes, but that needs checking. Silent by day and disturbed briefly for the cause of science, this individual is compared with many others until the perfect passport photo is found. Vital statistics, vital being the operative word. Then it's back to sleep in his usual spot amongst those unfriendly looking thorns. And underwater is hardly a gentle paradise for the vegetarian tadpole of an English frog. Another amphibian, also declining, is on the hunt, a newt. So is the dragonfly larva with an extendable grab. It's an underwater jungle down here with frog tadpoles on what seems like everyone's menu. Dragonfly larva has snatched a frog tadpole. But mass production is the name of the survival game and many species will outnumber the predators who fancy an easy meal, whatever age or stage. And it's in England that the worldwide threat to amphibians is being tackled amongst an increasing number of places also trying to turn losers into winners. At the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust at Slimbridge, famous for saving the Hawaiian goose or nene. So what we've got in here is we've got the, the golden Colombian dart frog. Now these guys, they're the most poisonous animal on the planet. So in the wild, what they'll do is they'll eat ants and termites that will build up their toxins. And they've actually suggested that they're that poisonous that if you touched one, it would be fatal to you. So we've been breeding them here at Simbridge. And what we do is we use a technique called tadpole tea to rear up the, the tadpoles and we'll use red bush tea bags to do this. So what I'll do is I'll put some red bush tea bags in a bucket and let the water set overnight with the tea bags. And this is a technique we got from Paint and Zoo when we first got our dart frogs here at Slimbridge.
this one here, if it's a male, what they'll do is they'll fight off uh, the other males and then to try and breed with the females. And once they've bred and their eggs have all hatched, they'll leave one solitary male remaining in that pond. And what that male has to do is if there's areas of the water which are starting to dry out. But however we look at it, or however fragile frogs do, they're in a lot of trouble. They may be clever in that they can be amazingly camouflaged, being a leaf, or possessing poison that can kill us. But they are in crisis around the world due to a deadly combination of habitat destruction, pollution and climate change. Some like the huge Goliath frog of West Africa are eaten and other people go for frogs legs only. But the most serious hidden killer is a disease called Amphibian chytrid, for short. This deadly fungus is steadily spreading around the world. One third to one half of all amphibian species are currently threatened with extinction, with more than 160 species thought to have been lost in recent years. The only hope for many species is to take them into captivity, hopefully breed them, until the disease can be tackled in the wild. And it could be that the future of this little glass frog and other fantastic frogs and other amphibians is now in our hands. It's a marvel of miniaturization, all in one see-through package. Heart, blood vessels, and super suckers perfect for a climbing tree frog. But now for some good news, quite a bit actually. Meet Diane's bare-hearted glass frog, only recently discovered in Costa Rica and named after the mother of the senior author about this exciting find. Costa Rica is known to have 14 glass frog species the last one described in 1973. This is a positive update. As if to emphasize the marvelous diversity and adaptability of frogs, new species have been found all over the world. Some hardly drab and inconspicuous like this burrower from Pakistan. And from a remote mountain cave in Zimbabwe in Africa, they tracked down the insect-like whistle of the cave squeaker that had not been seen since 1962. Amazing. And they keep on coming. From the jungles of several countries in South America, and from Australia, Mahoney's toadlet, which frightens predator by flashing its bright orange groin, as you do. But now for something extra amazing. A new species of ant, discovered by a frog itself discovered by a scientist from New York, Christian Roberling. In Ecuador, he found this ant in the vomit, yes folks, the vomit of a little frog. When they've identified this new species of tropical ant, the frog is carefully returned to the wild, where its long mouth can reach into crevices and finding perhaps even more surprises for the dedicated scientists. So from this Kermit-like discovery, it does seem all is not gloom and doom for all amphibians. We may have already lost many species, and pollution, habitat destruction, and especially disease are continuing threats. So let's hope that lovable Kermit, and some other survivors like him, will win through in the end. <laughs>